India has declared a nuclear war on carbon emissions quite literally and is now set for a landmark breakthrough in nuclear energy. But it's not just that. Large private industries in India would soon be powered by nuclear energy. With this move, for the first time, nuclear power will be accessible to mega private entities or corporations in India, which was previously under exclusive government control. A government official confirmed, quote, the funding and land for the nuclear plant will be made available by the private player, but the plant will be managed by the NPCIL, unquote. India formally joined the big guns in a global race for small nuclear reactors, and what a grand entry it is. New Delhi will support the construction of about 50 small nuclear reactors through this public-private partnership. Currently, only a few small modular reactors are operational in the United States, Russia and China. India's Nuclear Power Cooperation will be responsible for constructing, managing and operating these 220 megawatt Bharat small reactors. In comparison, a standard nuclear reactor or nuclear power plant produces 1 gigawatt of energy, which is nearly five times more. India has 22 such operational nuclear reactors, which is the seventh highest in the world, ahead of Western nations, including Canada and the United Kingdom. Now, with these new small nuclear reactors, India aims to provide energy for hard to decarbonize sectors, such as steel and cement thus cutting major carbon emissions right at the source in what can be a blueprint for developing nations around the world to follow in order to save our planet. But given nuclear disasters like Fukushima in Japan and Chernobyl in Ukraine, is nuclear power a wise bet? The managing director and CEO of Tata Consulting Engineers, Amit Sharma, told PTI that designs have already been upgraded and new safety mechanisms have been put in place, saying, quote, we are going to take old designs of the PHWR and then reconfigure and redesign to be modular, scalable and safety aligned to post Fukushima standards." Unquote. He revealed that 40 to 50 such SMRs will be constructed in just the next 7 to 8 years. Furthermore, power companies and data centers in the country are expected to benefit greatly from this initiative. Rejecting the higher prices quoted by foreign players, India then decided to construct the reactors with indigenous PWHR technology at rupees 16 crore per megawatt. So what exactly are small modular reactors? Now small modular reactors or SMRs are innovative nuclear reactors with maximum capacity of up to 300 megawatts per unit, which again is about one third or one fourth of the output of conventional nuclear power plants. Now the advantages of SMRs stem from their compact and modular structure, allowing them to be deployed in areas where larger nuclear facilities would not be feasible. Being a mobile and agile technology, SMRs can be factory built, unlike conventional nuclear reactors that are built on site due to their size. The development was echoed by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman in July when she confirmed the Modi government's plans to partner with the private sector in research and development of SMRs or small modular reactors. The motive is to replace conventional hydrocarbon-based captive thermal power plants as the nation aims to achieve its ambitions of net zero emissions by 2070. So apart from exploring the territory of these small modular reactors, India is installing at least 10 new full-fledged nuclear power plants across the country which will start operations in the next few years. Expanding its nuclear power capabilities, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Science and Technology revealed that Gujarat, Rajasthan and Haryana will be witnessing the installation of these new 700 megawatt nuclear reactors. So why is India investing so heavily in nuclear energy? CEO of Tata Consulting Engineers explained, quote, To be honest, the only viable long-term solution for net zero is nuclear. I think nuclear is the bet globally. Everybody recognizes it." Unquote. Meanwhile, B.C. Patak, Chairman and Managing Director of the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, highlighted in January 2024, India's vision and dedication towards adopting cleaner energy by commissioning a nuclear power reactor virtually every year from here on. He elaborated, quote, Until now, we were building two or four reactors at a time, but now nine reactors are under construction at present, 10 reactors are in various pre-project activities, so 19 reactors are under various stages of implementation." Unquote. Now remember, 
a milestone in India's indigenous nuclear program, the 700 megawatt Kakrapur 3 and Kakrapur 4 reactors in Gujarat are now generating power commercially in tandem with the national power grid. Nuclear power provides a clean, dependable and sustainable energy source that can greatly decrease India's dependence on fossil fuels and help lower carbon emissions. According to stats by Niti Aayog, nearly 50% of energy in India is generated by coal, followed by solar energy at 20% and 10% each from hydro and wind, while nuclear makes only about 2%, just 2% of total energy generation in India. Union Minister Jitendra Singh added earlier this year, quote, in the coming five years, India's nuclear power generation capacity is expected to increase by around 70%. Unquote. Now, the goal is to have nuclear energy contribute 9 to 10 percent of India's total energy output by 2031, hopefully reducing the contribution of coal in this process. According to Department of Nuclear Energy, the cheapest energy being produced in India is at the Tarapur nuclear plant in Thane, Maharashtra, at just 92 paise per unit. Nuclear energy is also economical in the long run, however, it does involve massive costs up front. Thus, government backing and vision is essential. India has also shifted focus to green hydrogen production to contribute to decarbonization. Nuclear power can also play a significant role in green hydrogen production, thus serving a dual purpose, generating electricity as well as providing a promising source for clean hydrogen. Now, having a largely indigenous nuclear energy program, India's stature as a responsible player in the global nuclear energy sector is already well known. However, the country is only getting started. With a total installed capacity of 6,780 megawatt, India has total 22 nuclear power plants, which are currently operational. Additionally, eight of them, total of 6,000 megawatts, are under construction at various stages by Bhavini. Apart from these, the government has accorded administrative approval and financial sanction for the construction of further 12 new nuclear power projects till 2031 after which the nuclear capacity output in India is expected to triple at 22,480 megawatt. By putting up a formidable fight against climate change, India has vowed to reach net zero emissions by 2070 and that it will meet 50% of electricity requirements from renewable energy as early as 2030 or this decade. Now, if you think that's impossible, then you're in for a surprise. India is already nine years ahead of its commitment made at COP21 Paris Summit and has already met 40% of its power capacity from non-fossil fuels. India is a shining example for other developing economies to transition to clean energy owing to its technological breakthroughs as well as steady policy support. Now, the country is also one of the biggest producers of bioenergy with renewable energy growing at a faster pace than any other major economy in the world. So what are the challenges? The biggest hurdle in the expansion of nuclear power in India is the exorbitant upfront costs of nuclear reactors, including the funding of capital-intensive projects. But that's not all. Due to safety concerns post Fukushima, there have been significant public opposition to certain nuclear power sites in India, limiting the steady expansion and creation of new nuclear power plants. However, the demand for energy is rising in the world's most populated country and the largest democracy. Soon, India will be the third biggest economy in the world, giving rise to even more industries and smart cities. Given India's impeccable record in nuclear technology, the transition to nuclear power seems the only viable option to feed the unstoppable engine of the Indian economy. Have your say. Can nuclear energy power India to a superpower status? Leave a comment with your opinion and subscribe to Inconnect News for more current affairs and geopolitics.